Hi. How's it going? How are you? Very good. Very good. Good to see you again. Nice. And this is my favorite conference here, Display Week. Yeah, yeah. So you're definitely here. Yes. You have yes. some of the coolest display technology. Thank you. I agree. I agree. So yeah, um, so we're, we're very excited to be back at Display Week as well. Last year was actually the first year that we showed at Display Week. And it's such a great conference. There's so many good people here. So, you know, you meet great customers, you make, meet great engineers, um, and they have really good questions that you don't get at other shows. Um, so, and what we're doing is, uh, this is a 1.2 outdoor. Uh, so it's completely IP65, front, back, and sides. Uh, it's also a very, well, you can't quite tell with this frame, I'll show you in a second, but uh, it's actually a cabinetless design. So, it allows us to go into a much thinner form factor than we typically go into. Um, and it also allows for greater flexibility in terms of size and shape. Nice. Uh, so do you ship in huge displays? So we, we do. It's completely modular, right? And so all of our displays are completely modular. So as large as you want to go, whatever kind of resolution you need, whatever kind of aspect ratio you want, we can do that. Right? And so for something like this, this was intended to be kind of a LCD replacement for the outdoor market. So it's a 72 inch 720p display that goes up to 4000 nit. Currently we're only showing it about half that brightness because indoors that could be very problematic. So, All right. But, cool. Uh, what do we see here? Yeah. So this is our 1.2 floor. So as you can see, I'm not a very petite guy, but this supports me with no problem whatsoever. We've already had a deployment of this um, at uh, some secure facilities, and uh, it's been a really, really big success there. We've also, uh, we at NEB, we announced our XR series where we have a 1.9 floor with a matching 1.9 wall that's in rental cabinets, so the form factor's a little bit more flexible for you know, tearing it down, putting it back up. But uh, it's gotten a really good response. And so, so XR, very popular. Also in simulation, it's been very popular. And so there's a lot of cool use cases for this tech. And, uh, and it's fun, right? Like people, they come up here and they get, they get all tentative. Can I stand on it? Can I? Yeah, you can stand on it. It's great. You know? And you're walking directly on the display here. That's another unique factor that we've got going that other people don't, is that the 1.2 is the finest pixel pitch you can get in a floor and you're walking directly on the display. There's no overlay, there's no acrylic, there's no glass, so it's really directly on the display. So you get a much brighter display as a result, um, and it's uh, easier to service, so you don't have to pick up a big old piece of plastic or whatever to get at the... So how do you, you know. do this? Is it because you are used to making uh, scratch proof, unbreakable, kind of like That's right. this. Yes. And so you just kind of like make it compatible for. Um... That's right. That's right. So a lot of the work here was actually done with the frame underneath, right, to be able to support the weight. But the encapsulation, we had already developed that a long time ago, and we were we were actually the first to do an encapsulated direct view LED. And so we took that similar technology and we applied it to the floor, and then also bolstered the mechanics so that it could support the weight of people. Nice, so this could make for some awesome museum or showrooms uh, yes, or absolutely. Uh, headquarters of yes. a really cool company. Absolutely. You should just floor the whole floor. That's right, you want you want tile today and wood tomorrow, you know, you can do whatever kind of flooring you want, just feed in the right video. You know, you're absolutely right. The other, the other use case that's actually come up is um, wayfinding, so like, there's been some hotels that have talked to us like, hey, can we run this along our corridors? And so they've got a ballroom that's, you know, way down a hall. And so you could badge in and you have like a little avatar that's run along the side that will take you right to the ballroom that you need to get to, you know, or, you know, you know, where the elevators are or where the bar is or whatever, you know. So so it's you could get really creative with those type of applications. And you really couldn't do that before because, you know, you're good. If you step on it, you're gonna break it. But with this, it's fine. I think uh, I'd like to see a club disco. Yeah, right. And uh, where uh, the coolest dancers and the dance yes. move, they should be touch kind of a functionality. Right. And it should uh, it should be com it should be compatible with a DJ. Right. That uh, that's like right. kind of like the it's like the video show on the floor. Yeah. Right. Right. And you dance yeah. on it. Well, you know, people always come to me for all the great <laughs> dance moves, right? So <laughs> nice. And what what do we have here? So this is a 0.83, uh, 
Um, so uh, we, we've been doing uh, 0.83 for a couple years now. But the big deal about the 0.83, and it comes down to one of our technological competencies, is that it runs really cool. I mean, obviously you're on video right now, so people watching this can't really tell, but I would encourage you to touch this and then touch someone else's that's doing a sub one millimeter display. This is, this is barely above ambient temperature. Right. And so most, most of them, when you get down below, um, you know, one millimeter pixel pitch, they've got ropes that are keeping people away from them because there's so much heat coming off of them. But for us, it's like, it's no problem. So this is a, a high brightness also. So 2000 nit, uh, 0.83, um, and that's calibrated, right? Because a lot you'll see a lot of people, they'll do peak brightness, which doesn't really matter, right? So what you want to know is calibrated brightness. And so this is a 2000 nit calibrated brightness display. Somebody says, uh, this is what we need to build a holodeck room from Star yes. Trek. Yes, yeah, so they're probably talking about the floor and they're exactly right. So there are, this is going into simulation environments. And then, yeah, if you wanted to do it with the 0.83, then, then you could get really close and, you know, not have an issue in terms of resolving uh, the pixels. Definitely cool display, super strong and practical. Yes. They're and right. <laughs> they're right. They're right. I don't know who that was, but you're right. <laughs> Looks pretty bright. Yes, it is. It is. So especially when you start going to, towards that outdoor one that I mentioned, this is only running half brightness right now, and it can go up to 4,000 nit. We don't do that indoors because it'll. it's tough to look at indoors when it's that bright. Um, but again, and this is about 60% brightness on this 0.83. So it, they can go very, very bright. We also have very, very good contrast because of our proprietary encapsulation. So we actually put a black layer down to make sure it's really uniform black. And then we put a clear layer on top. And what a lot of other folks are doing is they're taking their clear and they're putting it on the whole thing um, and they're doping it with black flex to try and get that contrast. That does have one benefit that I will absolutely concede, which it improves the uniformity. So some of them are using a cheaper LED because, you know, they can get they can cheat some uniformity by using those black flecks. The problem is, is it reduces the brightness and increases the heat. So, nice. Yeah. All right. So what's next? What's People next? just want more and more and more. Uh, uh, I want the floor like this, but affordable, you know? Because uh, well, uh, you're only right. selling to customers who can afford it, yeah. things well, like that. Well, like that's always come, true. Big, big showroom. <laughs> that's always true. Yeah, no, so prices on all of this stuff has always been coming down. So like, this is about a fourth of the cost that it was, you know, you know, three years ago. And so, wow. yeah. When, it, we, when we met last time, it was four times more expensive. Uh, roughly. I'd have to look it up specifically, yeah. but even, now, you know, so the pandemic, everybody had price spikes, but it's starting to round off again and come back down. And so, so really, um, e even relative to the lower price points, it's, it's down probably half from what it was. So. And do you want to do stuff that's much smaller than uh, 1.83? Uh, so that's a 0.83, uh, but uh, we will. But here's the thing, is that what we're finding is that there's, there's kind of a, a, a gap, right? So at 0.83, people aren't really asking us for stuff that there's, we could do 0.7, we could do 0.6, but this meets most of their needs for a large format display you know, fine pixel fit, pitch, large format. So the next jump is actually down to like 0 0.3, 0 0.2, 0 0.1. And that's gonna get you into pixel pitches that are more familiar with like watches and tablets and LCDs and things like that. And so, and that's where the real price pressures are gonna kick in because you're dealing with other technologies that are very, very well established in a smaller form factor. And so there's kind of this no man's land between like a 0.8 and like a 0.3. And so we're heading that way. We've got um, we've got pathways. We've got you know uh, roadmaps that'll get us there. Um, and we've done some prototyping with some very very small pitch uh, stuff. But that's still a little bit on the horizon. But we fully expect it to get there. Any curved module? Yes. So there's a couple different ways of doing a curve. There's there's a physical literal curve, um, which. Uh, uh, friendly competitors of ours has a patent on. But the way that uh, we do a curve is actually faceted. 
And what we found is that when you get to the viewing distance that you're supposed to be at for the, for the pixel pitch, you don't see it at all. Like it literally melts away. It's well, not literally, but you know, it, it melts, you can't even see it at all. And so we're able to actually facet on a very small, um, pick, you know, basically this is made of submodules. And so we can, we can, um, we could facet on the cabinet level, we could facet on the PCB level, um, and we could even flip the cabinets. So we've got a lot of options to make those facets really small and really tight. So, but yeah, we actually just deployed a beautiful 50 foot curved screen recently outside of Washington, DC. And uh, so we do that stuff all the time. Do you have customers around the world? We do. We're absolutely a global company. In China? Uh, we do. Um, so. Uh, I, I was in Shenzhen recently. Yeah. And I haven't been there for four years. Right. And there are some malls that are just yes. completely insane. Yes. And, and, and to bring people to the mall, you have to yeah. compete with the Netflix right. and whatever at home. Right. You have to make some kind yeah, yeah, yeah. of amazing experience yep. where people are just marveling and maybe they're yeah. taking selfies and yeah, experiential absolutely yeah. making an experience no question so i will say that uh, our market in china is limited because um, that there's a lot of inexpensive led that goes in there uh, but we have found some people that are looking for a high quality product and so we've been able to match with them but uh, yeah europe we're very big uk uh, japan australia Taiwan, US, Canada, you know. So yeah, we're definitely Middle East, so Dubai, we've got a lot of stuff, you know. Because uh, Times Square has to be replicated in every square. Right, sure, sure. And everybody wants to have maybe a smaller Times Square. So. Right. Well, Times Square typically is very large pixel pitch, so you're talking about, in some cases, 10, 15, 20 millimeter pixel pitches. Um, and so we don't typically play in that space, which where we're more looking at is something like this, the 1.2, where it's gonna be more street level. And so, you know, when you're walking through Paris and you see jc 2 co kind of LCDs everywhere or on the bus stop or whatever, that's the type of places that we would be going in with this type of thing. Cool, all right. Yeah. Cool, thanks a lot. Absolutely, thanks nice. for coming by, appreciate thanks. it. All right, awesome. So here, the display week, there's a bunch of 8K displays, there's 4K 120, and all these new TVs can come with HDMI 2.1, and there's a whole bunch of updates that I'm going to be filming at the Computex 2023 with the HDMI licensing administrator, which are organizing all the display makers, the cable manufacturers, and making sure that they are compatible with each other, there's a stable performance, there's no interference, and um, there's a smooth 8K future with 48 gigabit per second support. And there's the whole um, infrastructure for, for certifying, for testing, for making sure there's no interference with the, with the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and stuff that people have. So thanks a lot for watching. Check out my HDMI playlist in hdmi.charbax.com.